Hi, my name is Molly Summerhalder. I'm a certified wellness coach, the International Association of Wellness Professionals, and certified yoga teacher. In this video, I'm gonna talk about gut health and ways that you can find relief for both IBS and other gut issues. So I've suffered from IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, for as long as I can remember. I'd have anxiety going to new places or at work events because I'd be afraid that I'd have a flare up and I'd have to deal with health issues while I was trying to work or enjoy new things in my life, or going to places making sure that the bathroom was close by, you name it. And so I had started making subconscious choices in eliminating things from my diet, trying new things, but it really wasn't until I took a more holistic approach and really looked at my wellness and stress relief that things really changed for me when it came to my IBS and flare-ups. And so I love sharing these things that I found that work for me with my clients and I wanted to share them in this video. So the first one is fermented foods. Fermented foods are really good pre and probiotics. And so there are certain ones that work better than others. And some of those are fermented beets, really good for high blood pressure. People like sauerkraut. I'm German and I'm not a sauerkraut fan, but people do love sauerkraut. Um, you can get fermented Carrots with ginger, also a great alternative. Ginger is good for our digestion. Um, some people also like to have kabucha. Kabucha, you have to be careful. You wanna make sure there's not a lot of sugar in it because during the fermenting process, when there's a lot of sugar, it can downplay that prebiotic or pro probiotic that we need. And then also looking at, again, yogurt with not a lot of sugar in it. So I add fruit to mine. Sometimes I add my elderberry in the morning. So really good alternative for that. And then sourdough bread. Fermented bread is really good because it doesn't have those cooked oils. So making sure that it has the old, slow way of making that sourdough bread. So maybe you have a friend that makes it or maybe you wanna make it yourself. And then also the second thing is looking at cooked oils and processed foods. So cooked oils, we add a lot of them to our breads and um, other pastry products. So want to make sure that you don't have those in there that can cause bloating, it can cause flare-ups. Same with that processed foods. Anything that has a long list of names, probably not good for your gut. So you might want to eliminate from your diet or just monitor how much you intake. And then also, you know, going back to the cook oils, making sure that you're also cooking with oils that can go at a high heat. So I like actually making things with ghee. Um, I like to roast my vegetables in ghee, and ghee is a really nice product because it doesn't have soy, it doesn't have dairy, and it can withstand that high heat. It's like butter, but it's an alternative to butter. And then also looking um, when we do have a flare-up, right? So we can do all these things right, but we could be stressed out and we still have a flare-up. Just because we do fermented foods and don't have processed things doesn't mean that we're not going to have a flare-up because it also is linked to stress. And so I have this digestive herbal tea that I, that I make. Um, it's fennel, cumin, and coriander seeds. You steep all those together. You can actually put the remainder of that steeped tea um, that you boil. So you boil all the seeds together and then you strain it and you can put the liquid into the fridge and you can use that for several days after and just heat it up when you need it. So what fennel and coriander and cumin does is it fires up the digestion. So when we're not feeling so great, we're kind of feeling sluggish or things are just not happy, it kind of helps settle things as well as speed up that process so we feel really good. So taking that time to find that you know nice tea if, at the end of the day if you need help with your digestion, always a great, great alternative. And then also limiting and monitoring your stress level. So this was a huge one for me when it came to my IBS. And so we're finding more and more that the gut is linked to the brain. There's actually this nerve that runs all the way from here, all the way down our body called our vagus nerve. And it's the central nerve in our body. And it helps us with our stress and stress reduction. And so when this is going crazy, the rest of us goes crazy, right? So our when our gut's not happy or our brain's not happy, when we're stressed out, look at all those times when you've had a flare up. So you usually come probably after a really stressful time or during a stressful time. It's because it's our body trying to balance out this nervous system and it doesn't know what to do. And so we wanna keep that gut healthy because when we look at our stress levels too, 
90 to 95% of our serotonin levels live in our gut. And our serotonin is that yummy, healthy hormone that we need for sleep and happiness and making sure we can go about our work day or whatever else it might be. It's the one hormone that we need. And when we're stressed out, we deplete ourselves of that hormone because we're so stressed out, we're stressing out our gut and we're eliminating our serotonin levels, the good gut bacteria, all those things that we need. And so it's really key to monitor that stress and make sure that you're doing mindfulness techniques, breathing techniques, finding time to to de-stress during those stressful times, whatever it might be, and coming back to these other practices. So there's so many other things that I could mention that help me with my gut health, but those are the main things that I started out with. And once you start out with those, it's just becoming your own detective, determining what works for you, deciding, you know, maybe I need to eliminate this from my body because it doesn't feel good. Understanding that you take time to listen to your body and your body tells you, yeah, this is what I want or this is what I don't need, but we don't take the time to listen. So being your own explorer of your body and knowing that every body is different. So some of these things might work for you, some of them won't. And it's completely okay because this is your journey to finding your own relief from the gut issues. And allow yourself the time to figure it out. We wanna rush through things so fast, but when it comes to really healing our gut, it takes time. Again, you're gonna have flare ups. Don't get mad at yourself, don't get disappointed. Just allow yourself to rest, have some of that digestive tea, and know tomorrow's a new day and you can start exploring the body again. So for more health tips and for other gut-related things, please find me at slwellness.info.